So we saw a very interesting uh, milestone being reached in the IT industry last year. IDC did a survey of customers worldwide and for the first time we saw that the number of virtual machines that existed in the world outstripped the number of physical machines. What that tells me is that what we're now experiencing has become a tide of technology. Customers will get virtualized and they'll get virtualized irrespective of the vendors that they're choosing to get virtualized on. And if we follow that tide of technology, we start to move towards subsequent steps post-virtualization. Customers start to move towards these concepts of automation. When you virtualize your data center, the basic atomic unit inside your data center becomes a virtual machine. And every virtual machine is exactly the same as the next virtual machine. If you have this complete standardization in your data center or even across your desktop environment, then you're able to start automating almost every IT and infrastructure process associated with these common standardized units inside your data center environment. As you start to automate more, you start to realize that the less human beings are involved in the management of your infrastructure and the delivery of these IT services, the more money you can take from operations and the more money you can put into investing in new projects that actually drive competitive advantage for your business, that actually move your business forward. So, with it being a rising tide, and with customers seeing these massive cost benefits from virtualization that are allowing them to transform IT into something that delivers competitive advantage, we, we see it now being a, an inevitable force in the industry, ultimately culminating in these ideas of infrastructure, applications, and end-user computing as a service. We see every few years in the IT industry complete shifts in approaches towards doing IT. In the 70s and 80s, it was the move to the mainframe. In the 80s, client-server became dominant. In the 90s and early 2000s, these web-based architectures really started to, to transform the way that people produced and consumed IT. Today, the move towards cloud computing is becoming completely prevalent in the IT industry, and it is here to stay. Cloud computing touches everything that our customers do. It touches the way that they think about and address end user computing. It touches the way that they build modern, lightweight, cloud ready application frameworks and runtime environments. And it touches the way in which they think about delivering infrastructure back into the business. There's a number of forces that are pushing on customers to have them transform the way that they produce and consume IT towards these concepts of cloud computing. In the end user space, we see a proliferation of end user devices, we see pressures on the CIO to support all new sorts of operating systems, and we see the delivery into the enterprise of software as a service. In the application space, the traditional runtime environments and the traditional application frameworks are becoming far too expensive, far too heavy, and far too difficult to maintain inside the enterprise. And they're not easily moved into these new data center services that the cloud service providers are, are, are offering to the marketplace. And in the infrastructure space, the amount of money, the, amount, the percentage of spend that organizations are having to invest just to maintain their existing sprawled and siloed infrastructures are forcing them to look at new ways to do things. And cloud computing across each one of those areas is providing significant solutions to that. So we certainly think that this shift towards cloud computing is absolutely a rising tide and it is absolutely something that will transform the IT industry. What's important though is to define what cloud computing is and to look at the areas in which cloud computing manifests itself. Cloud computing is not a destination. We don't necessarily have to go and put our applications or our data center somewhere for us to benefit from the promise of cloud computing. 
much rather cloud computing is an approach to computing. It's a, an approach to computing that allows for the efficient pooling and aggregation of resources, that pushes down the cost of IT delivery into the enterprise, that allows for the, the flexible delivery of these IT services in a way that can, can be consumed in a fundamentally end-user centric way inside an organization or purchased from an external service provider and in a way that is charged back into the business in an elastic manner. Now we see cloud computing manifesting itself in three main areas when we look across our, our existing marketplace. Certainly organizations are starting to look to external service providers to provide them with platform services or provide them with infrastructure as a service. Today, the majority of the investments that our customers are making is in the development of private cloud environments inside their data centers. This recognition that cloud computing is an approach to computing and that they can take that approach to computing and deliver it in a fundamentally more user-centric way back into the business from within their own internal data centers. The obstacles are actually mainly perceived obstacles from the enterprise CIO, but the, the obstacles that they see today that are stopping them benefit from this new paradigm in computing are mainly related to areas of security and operational rigor. How do I know that if I implement these cloud computing environments or if I purchase cloud computing environments from external service providers that my data and my compute power is actually secure. It's funny, although cloud computing is not a destination, moving to the cloud is a journey. Customers need to get virtualized. They need to ensure that 100% of their x86 workloads are virtual workloads. They need to recognize that x86 is the platform for the cloud, and they also need to realize that once they get virtualized and they start to look at virtualizing their mission critical applications, that this becomes a discussion around service levels. That the business must start to understand that the most secure, the most fault tolerant, the most highly available place to run your enterprise applications is in these virtualized, flexible, infrastructure as a service type environments. Once they do that, they can very quickly start to move to these ideas of self-service provisioning and of building internal private clouds which can be federated to the public clouds of our service provider partners.